Good morning, my fellow Trade Station traders. I hope that everyone is having a wonderful Wednesday morning, and we're going to get started with our presentation today, highlighting the Trade Station desktop. Before we get started, we have to go through some of the usual disclosures and introductions. My name is Jesus Nava. I am the Director of Client Training and Education for Trade Station Securities. Um, I always enjoy to do these classes because I get to meet you guys in person and also interact with you. So let's use this opportunity to talk through the chat. You know, I'll be glancing at the chat once in a while to see if you have any questions or any concerns about TradeStation. And that's the reason why we're here today. As you see right here in the title of this presentation, uh, Discover TradeStation's Desktop Core Features, we are going to focus on the desktop version of TradeStation as a TradeStation client, you have access to multiple platforms in which you can trade. This one is the one you download on your computer and you have to install it. Uh, we have other versions of TradeStation that are easier to access. For example, the web trading version is very easy because that's the one you just go to uh, tradestation.com and click on login at the top. And then we have the mobile app. We have one for iOS and we have one for Android. So whichever one you log into, you'll have access to your trading account. They are all interconnected. So what you do in one will be reflected on the other in terms of trading activity and positions. Not in terms of, uh, you know, charting and everything else, but all your trading activity and all your hit trading history and positions and, and orders, they'll all be reflected on all your logins. Let's go through some of the disclosures. Just keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about is for educational purposes only. Uh, these are not recommendations of trade station. Also, active trading, not suitable for everyone. Please make sure that uh, you are aware of the risks that are associated with trading online. And um, if anybody needs additional information on these disclosures, go to www.tradestation.com forward slash important dash information. All the other links are right here on this PowerPoint slide. Let's go ahead and uh, get this presentation started. I'm going to switch over to my desktop, which I have open already. The first time that you log into the TradeStation desktop, you see TradeStation today. If you don't have TradeStation today visible on your TradeStation platform, it may be because you probably closed it, but you can always access it by going to apps and then click on, on TS today. TradeStation today um, is meant to be here as a way of letting you know what's happening at TradeStation. I wanna point out that there's a list of videos right here on the left-hand side, which are also located on the TradeStation YouTube channel, but you can watch these videos directly on the platform if you wish to do so. We have a collection of 18 videos called the TradeStation Quick Start, and they highlight different features of the TradeStation platform. So if you haven't, watch those um, I encourage you to do so because they just introduce you to many of the popular applications right here at TradeStation. In the middle, we're connected to news. So this gets updated um, periodically with news um, events and you see what's happening uh, in the world at any given moment. And over here on the right-hand side, we have upcoming events. We update those weekly. So you have um, events that are upcoming and it's just a matter of clicking on one of these and clicking on the register button. The events that you see here are also posted on the website. So it's the same thing that you would see the same events as if you would go to, you know, tradestation.com, learn and events. The what's new section gives you a glimpse on what is it that we're working on and what's being fixed, what's being added. So if you're interested, you can see those. And over here on the left-hand side, these boxes are recommended workspaces or things that you've done recently. Um, if you're having problems getting started with the TradeStation platform and want ideas on how to set up uh, the TradeStation applications, you can look at those workspaces as a guide and maybe make your own edits and save them as if they were your own. So that's the reason why they're there. That's the reason why we ship TradeStation with some built-in workspaces. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, open up a new workspace here. I'm going to Come here at the bottom left and click on the plus. This is a way that you open up a blank workspace. And I'm going to get started with a chart window. You can click on chart analysis anytime, anytime you need a chart. And you can click on chart analysis as many times as you need charts. 
Uh, so feel free to do that. There's no limitation. I guess the only limitation would be your computer. You know, a lot of times if you're running a lot of things on trade station and you have, you know, all these symbols updating tick by tick, um, you may see some performance issues. But that's, I mean, that's when you're really taxing trade station and opening a lot of things. For the most part, you know, trade station runs really smoothly and uh, without any hiccups. So let me go ahead and resize this chart so it fills the whole area. And uh, here, what we're going to do is show you a few navigational tips. First thing, up arrow and down arrow on the keyboard. If you haven't used them, find the up arrow and the down arrow keyboard keys because they are going to be very useful in compressing and expanding the view. If I press the down arrow key multiple times, I squeeze the view. If I press the up arrow multiple times, I expand the view. Everybody gets that? If I come over here with my cursor and I go here in the price scale and I can click and drag to squeeze the candles where I can click and drag up if I want to expand or extend the candle. Now, when you do that, you're setting the scale to a fixed value. So if you want to reset everything to the way that it was, just bring your cursor towards the bottom of the chart. Some buttons will appear and there's a reset button that resets the scale to automatic. Okay, so remember those two things, up and down arrow keys on the keyboard, uh, clicking and squeezing the chart here, also clicking on the candles and moving them around. You know, that's another feature that you get if you are on a fixed scale, but always remember that you can come back to the bottom, click on reset and the chart is back on where it was. If I squeeze the chart until it cannot go any further, you can see that it doesn't automatically load data. Trade Station, to be as efficient as possible, is going to load um, a, a small amount of data just to get you started. I mean, we assume that you want to look at current data, but if you want to look at historical data, you would have to request it and add it to the chart. In Trade Station, that's something that is very simply done. You just have to type in the amount of data that you need. So for example, here in my five minute chart of Spider, I have about five days of historical data. How do I know? Because I can look here on the left-hand side and I can see the session breaks. The session breaks on trade station are like these dotted lines and you can see where the session begins and where the session ends. So if I count those sessions, I'd see five historical days. If I wanted to fill this chart, I probably need about 60 days. And what I do is I just type 60 days into the screen. Notice that I'm not clicking anywhere inside of trade station. I'm just using my keyboard because as soon as you start pressing keys on your keyboard, the command line will pop up automatically. It happens automatically so as soon as you start typing um, because it assumes that you're going to type in a command. And this type of command, 60, actually no, I meant to say 60 days. 60 minutes also works if you want to you know, change the time frame to 60 minutes. But what I wanted to do is load 60 days of historical data so I can type in 60 days, hit enter, and it'll load 60 days of historical data on a five minute time frame for Spider. And you can see that it fills my screen. If there's more historical data in the back, you get a scroll bar allowing you to scroll bar, I mean, to scroll back to historical data. If you'd rather, you know, click and drag the candles to go back, you can do that as well. Okay, so those are two things uh, that you can do to move the chart horizontally. Uh, so let me open up my chart here a little bit. I see your question, Marie about the anchored VWAP. Mm. We're going to take a look at that uh, towards the end of the presentation, Marie. So hang on with us and uh, I'll answer any questions that are not related to the topic. Um, I'll make sure to answer those at the end of the class. So if anybody has any questions with anything on TradeStation, even if it's not being discussed at the moment, you can ask questions at the end of class. And that way uh, we don't go on, on a tangent here and focus on on what we need to talk about today, right? And make sure that I cover all the pieces that I wanted to cover because I'm gonna talk about charting, I'm gonna talk about scanning, and then I'm gonna talk about trading. So hopefully we'll have time to discuss everything. Uh, the same thing you can do if you wanna change the symbol. This is spider. Let's say for example, that I wanted to look at Microsoft. Again, all I need to do is type in MSFT 
Notice that the command line pops up again. MSFT is shown right there inside the command line. And I just press the enter key and I have a Microsoft chart. So this, do that, you know, practice on the TradeStation platform because it's very easy to change the symbol. Just type it in, hit enter. If I wanted to change the time frame, you can also type those in. Like for example, if, uh, if I type in daily, the word daily and I hit enter, then look at Microsoft now, I'm looking at a daily chart. If I type in the word monthly, this is a monthly chart of uh, Microsoft. If I wanna go back to, five, to the minute time frame, five space, space M-I-N, and it switches me back to a five minute time frame. I'm a fan of shortcuts and I like the command line. I think uh, typing commands into the keyboard is very quick. And I, and I showed you three things you can type in. You can type in a symbol, you can type in a time frame, and you can type in a amount of historical data to load. So practice those on your trade station. You'll see how quickly you can make changes to the chart. Of course, I can come up here and go to time frame and select from this dropdown. But if, uh, if what you're looking for is not listed here, just be aware that you can just type it in and trade station will respond. Now you can also go to data and edit symbol if you wanted to change the symbol, but who wants to go through the menus to change the symbol when you can just type it in and hit enter, right? I mean, those are things that make the use of trade station very easy, okay? The circles at the bottom right, uh, thank you, uh, Jeff, for asking. Those two circles, yeah, they tell you your connection to trade station. You get two circles because there's two separate servers. You have the server that gives you the data, the data server, real-time updates. And then you have the server that takes care of your execution. If the SIM or the blue button is shown is because you're connected to a simulator. If both are green, that means that you are on the data server and you're also connected to your live account, the one that has all your funds. So that's a clear way for you to know which environment you're connected to. And it's good that we're pointing this out because Everyone here gets access to a trading simulator where you can practice everything that you're learning on the trade station platform without having to risk your capital, especially when we start looking at some of the order entry tools. We want to make sure that we have that ability to practice. Let's go ahead and talk about drawing tools and indicators. In the drawing menu, we have a comprehensive list of uh, drawing tools that you can use. If you wanted to do something quick, like a horizontal line, I can click it. Maybe I'm looking at the price of Microsoft here. Uh, it's been, the price movement has been somewhat sideways uh, today and yesterday. So let's, let's, let's say that we are monitoring this uh, resistance level. So we want to draw a line there. And let's say, for example, that we also want to monitor this support level. So drawing, horizontal line, let's draw a line right here. You know, today, the candle, the current candle, let me open up my chart a little bit. You can see how the current candle is close to breaking that line. But I can set alerts on these two lines by just double clicking. Let me double click on this horizontal line and enable the alert. That makes the line hot. So if the price touches it, you are going to be alerted. If you want to configure the alert, you can do that. Just click configure and you can change the sound. You can change the visual pop up. Uh, you can even send an email to yourself if you wanted to. We're not going to configure alerts right now. I just wanted to show you that they're there for you to get notifications when th something's happening. So here I double click on the bottom one, which is my support level, and I enable the alert as well. Click OK, and that's it. So now I'm looking at a mi Microsoft chart on a five minute time frame, and I've set two levels on my chart to which I've enabled an alert so I can be notified if either one gets hit. This allows me to go to a different workspace if I needed to. So I can click on the plus here at the bottom, go to a different workspace and maybe open up a different chart. Any workspace that is open, even if it's not visible on the screen at this time, it's monitoring tick by tick. And if the alert is hit, you'll be you know, alerted. A lot of times, you know, some softwares, they if you put something in the background, it's not really updating. Uh, only what's visible is updating. But TradeStation, as long as you have the workspace open, is running all those calculations and mon monitoring the prices tick by tick. On this chart, I want to go here to, just going to change the chart type to daily. 
There we go. And I'm going to draw a trend line. Drawing, trend line. I'm going to go from this low right here to this low right here. Maybe, you know, that low was already broken, you know. Uh, you see how Microsoft on a daily chart tested that trend line multiple times. And recently, it just broke below that trend line. But the same procedure if i wanted to set up an alert here i just uh, double click on the trend line go to the alerts tab and enable the alert and click okay that's all you need to do now that line is going to trigger the alert whether it crosses below or above the line but it has to touch the line if you wanted to set up a, an alert if there is a gap make sure that you change the type of alert to breakout intra interbar intra meaning that it has to touch the line and enter if there's a gap and the price jumps to the other side without touching it okay so just keep that in mind in case you want to have both behaviors uh david is asking is there a keyboard shortcut for selecting the line icon hmm i don't believe there is there may be um, um there is a list of commands that you can use in trade station i Probably don't have time to go into that, but there is a video if you search on um, on YouTube, a presentation that I did on command line and shortcuts and hotkeys and uh, and everything related to how you can program certain things on TradeStation. So search the YouTube, the TradeStation YouTube channel for um, hotkeys, and that's a presentation, a one-hour presentation that I did on shortcuts on TradeStation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at indicators. Right here, if I go to studies and I click on add study, I'm gonna get a list of hundreds of different technical indicators that I can add. The list of indicators or the list of studies in TradeStation is divided into five main categories, indicators, show me's, paint bars, activity bars, and probability maps. There's help on each one of these. So if you find anything and you wanna know how it's calculated, for example, VWAP estimated, you can just select it and click okay. I'm sorry, you can click on definition and this will open up the help files and show you what are the parameters on the VWAP estimated, a market synopsis and some plot information. So if you find something that you're not really familiar with, then you can just click on definition to learn more. Um, Marie, the anchored VWAP, I don't see it as a list. I don't see it as a built-in indicator, Marie. I'm not sure if it's a custom indicator. Um, we may have to take this offline if it's a custom indicator and I can help you with that, okay? Um, by the way, if anybody wants to um, ask any questions to our education team, you can email education at tradestation.com. Just be aware that this is not a support line. So your email may not be answered immediately is our education inbox, but you can always reach me through the education inbox at any time. If you really want immediate support and answers to questions that you may have on the platform, contact client services. And that's a team that's uh, staffed to take your call. You know, um, I'm not even sure what the numbers are. I'm sure there's a set schedule, but uh, feel free to call them if you have any questions, you know? All right, so let's go ahead and... Uh, apply something that we're all familiar with. So let's go here to a moving average two lines. There's a little checkbox here that says prompt for editing. I have mine checked. You usually want it checked if you want to change the parameters. But if you just want to use the defaults, just leave it off. And as soon as you click OK, the indicator will be added to the chart. And I can see the two um, moving averages working here on my screen. If I want to modify this, my shortcut is to double click on the lines. Double clicking takes you to different customization windows. For example, if you double click on the background, it takes you to customize window, right? If you double click on a candlestick, it takes you to customize symbol. Notice that, notice the difference. One was window and this is symbol. If you double click on the indicator, it takes you to customize indicator. So those are shortcuts to customizing the item that you're double clicking on. I use them all the time uh, because I don't like going through the menus. I can go here to studies, edit studies, 
select the moving averages, click on customize to end up in the same place that I could have gone just by double clicking. All right. I'm going to double click on the moving averages. Takes me to the inputs tab. Think of inputs as a way for you to provide your own personal parameters. Let's suppose that I want to monitor a 50 against a 100 period moving average. I'm going to change the fast to 50 and the slow to 100. And then I'm just going to click OK. Notice how the moving averages recalculate. I'm using these parameters on this chart. I can go on to another chart and add it again and use other numbers if I wanted to. Uh, we have multiple moving averages that you can use, even exponentials and the more advanced ones like hull and uh, comma and triangular. So those are things that you can add on your trade station. Ideally, on a moving average concept, what I'm looking for is for the lines to cross. You know, a moving average cross just implies that maybe the trend that you were on has ended and it's shifting direction. So I know that these two moving averages are not close to crossing. In fact, for Microsoft, they seem to be growing apart. But um, if they do get closer and they cross, I want to be alerted. So I'm going to double click on this indicator the same way that I did with the horizontal line and the trend line. And I'm going to go to the alerts tab and enable the alert. Sometimes for these types of alerts, I just set it to alert once per bar. Otherwise, you know, if the moving average is crossing and uncrossing, crossing and uncrossing, I'm going to get an alert every single time that it crosses. And sometimes it could be annoying. But if you did once per bar, you get the alert and then you can just check the chart. Click OK. And that's it. Now my alert is set up. My horizontal line was met. This is uh, it's good that this happened in real time because I wanted to show you what the alert looks like. Look at the bottom right of my trade station. I'm getting the alert on the horizontal line. I don't have the horizontal line right here on my view because it was the previous workspace that I had created. But it tells me that Microsoft at 14, 14, 77 crossed my horizontal line. Notice that if I hover over this alert pop-up, it doesn't go away. But if I move away from the pop-up, it'll disappear in just like it did just now. But I can go over here to my other workspace and I can see that, yeah, the price activity just penetrated that support line and I got alerted. The same happens here on this other workspace for the two moving averages. As soon as they cross, I'm going to be alerted because that's the way that I set it up. Now let's talk about scanning and let's dive deeper into this moving average uh, concept. This is Microsoft, uh, and I was talking about moving averages, right? What if you wanted to scan for symbols that are crossing right now? Maybe Microsoft is not a good symbol right now because it's not crossing on the 50 against a 100. Although we did see that it broke that, you know, that trend line that we drew. Maybe these um, moving averages are a little bit too high in the parameters to, you know, take notice of that break. But there could be a, you know, a possibility that the price of Microsoft continues on the same direction. And notice that I'm continuously getting that alert at the bottom. So if you want to disable an alert, just go back to where you were. Notice that I was getting alerts because it had come down or below that trend line or the horizontal line. But then it went back inside the channel and it alerted me again because it touched it. <laughs> so anytime that it touches it, it's going to alert me. But if you wanted to disable, just double click on the line again, go to the alerts tab and uncheck enable alert. That's the way that you disable that alert, okay? Going back to my scanning idea, I wanna look for symbols that are crossing right now. I don't wanna wait for Microsoft to cross. I wanna find opportunities. So let me go here to a new workspace. By the way, all these untitled workspaces that I have here at the bottom, I haven't saved. So if I were to close my trade station and not save the changes, I would lose everything that I created here, which is okay on my my on my side because I'm just you know showing you examples. But if you wanted to save your work, make sure that you're saving workspaces with a descriptive name so that you know exactly what's in them. I'm going to come over here to radar screen. Here it is. 
this uh, button radar screen is a watch list, uh, but on steroids because it has a lot more functionality than just a simple quotes window. So I'm gonna go here to radar screen. It's our real time scanning tool. Perfect. And I'm just gonna resize it. I'm going to add a list of symbols. By the way, the symbols here I can type in manually if I want to. So if I type in Microsoft, AAPL, no, Walmart, Disney, whatever the symbol that you type and hit enter, you know, Trade Station will give you a real time quote on that symbol. But that's not what I wanted to do. So let me highlight these symbols, press delete. I'm going to go back here to my first row, go to data, and we have what's called symbol lists. Uh, right here in this menu, you have popular indexes and the components of those indexes, and you have other symbol lists that you can explore. So go in there if you're interested in, you know, and looking at lists that are organized by industry sectors and index components, all that is in other symbol lists. And here, I'm going to go to the NASDAQ 100. All right, these are the 100 symbols that make up the NASDAQ index. In addition to that, I'm going to go here to the right-hand side of this space over here. I'm going to go to apps, and I'm going to open up a chart analysis so that I can put it right here on the side of my radar screen. I'm going to change the time frame on my chart here to daily. And I'm going to add, I clicked on study groups or strategy components. Let's go studies, add study. There we go. And I'm going to go here to the moving average two lines. Okay. Let's look at the default parameters because we'll get um, more symbols that are getting close to cross. Notice that in the default parameters of the moving averages, which, is, which are nine and 18, you can see that the two lines are really getting close to cross. They've crossed multiple times in the past few days. So maybe this is also a false signal. We already talked about the possibility of Microsoft continuing on that uptrend, but we have a, you know, a serious break on that trend line, which we have to watch. But the moving averages are really close to crossing. But I, I'm looking for the ones that are crossing right now. So let's go ahead and do that with my radar screen. So I want to remove some of the columns here that I don't need. For example, bid, ask, high, and low. I don't need those right now. So I can click and drag over those four column headers. Notice that they get highlighted, and I can press delete on the keyboard. So any column that you don't need, you can remove it. Any column that you do need, you can add it. I can click on plus here, or I can click on studies and add studies. It does exactly the same thing. I'm gonna click on the plus. Uh, moving average two lines is highlighted. I'm gonna click on add, and I'm going to click okay. What this does, it's going to calculate moving averages for all these 100 symbols simultaneously and keep a real time calculation of those moving averages, which is pretty impressive. Let me go ahead and remove these two top rows. I don't need the label or the NASDAQ index. I just need the components of the index. So I just deleted the top two rows. And I wanted to link my radar screen using my symbol linking button right here on the title bar with my chart. Notice how they're linked right now. So if I click on Apple, for example, here on the left, my chart will update to Apple. Apple is another symbol that crossed yesterday and today. It's kind of uh, those moving averages are kind of separating. So it may cross today or, or not, but this will not be a real time alert. Let's see which symbols are crossing right now. But one thing that I wanted to point out is, in fact, let me go ahead and uh, I may have, let me go to format window here for a moment. Uh, because if you guys notice, the prices are kind of cut off. And the reason for that is because I was playing around with this price access display. I need to turn this on. No, not this one. Right access, automatic. I don't know why it's not giving me the full prices here. Maybe I need to resize. Let's see. thought I did. But it's not giving me. Go to settings, preferences display. I think it's one of the settings here. Um, uh, here it is. Remove trailing zeros from price axis. 
Let me uncheck that, click OK, and I'm back at square one. Uh, I was doing some testing or some analysis on, on some of the functionality, and I had I remember that I had checked that option that removes the zeros from your price scale, and I was like, where are my prices? But take a look at um, the blue, which is the fast moving average right now is showing a value of 171.05. This does not match my fast average here for Apple, which is 170.13. And the reason for that is because radar screen also has an interval setting. The only way that it can calculate the moving average is by loading historical data. And it has to know, you know which time frame to use. Am I doing the calculation on five minute data, on daily data. My chart, you guys noticed that I changed it to daily. So it's not matching the time frame on radar screen. So I need to select all the symbols that are part of this. And I can do that by just one single click on the column header, highlights the whole column. And I'm gonna go to time frame and click on daily. So that changes this whole column to daily. And you can see how the moving averages get recalculated now, if I look at the moving average of Apple or the fast average is 171.04, which matches my 171.04 here on the chart. Be aware of that because a lot of times you're going to be looking at radar screen and charting. And if there's a mismatch, it's going to be a head scratcher. So uh, just be aware that there's a time frame component to technical analysis on both places. And this, of course, is one of the great features of radar screen. Imagine. I already have 100 symbols inside of the radar screen monitoring the moving averages in real time, tick by tick. So technically, this is like having 100 chart windows opened at the same time. But without having the 100 charts, you only have one application doing all the work on those 100 symbols. Now let's go ahead and filter. But before we filter, Let's go ahead and do some ranking so you can see how cool you know, radar screen is. For example, you can double click on any column header. If you want to see out of the 100 symbols, which one is the one traded the most, I'm going to double click on a volume. It sorts in ascending order, but double click again, and it sorts in descending order. So now you can see that Tesla is the symbol that's traded the most with a mere 25.5 million shares traded. <laughs> That's impressive, right? Um, or if you want to know which one has changed the most based on percentage, double click on percent change. And you can see the one that has lost the most is Autodesk, ADSK. If you double click again, the one that has gained the most is Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, REGM. So those are some of the things you can do if you wanted to rank your symbol based on values, then you can just double click on the column header. Uh, Roberto, to change the radar screen to daily, just go to the time frame drop down and select. Well, first of all, you have to select the symbols. So click on symbol, highlight the whole column, and then go to time frame and select daily. That's how you change the symbols to daily. And to access radar screen, based on a question here in the chat, just go to apps, and you should see radar screen as part of the applications in the apps menu. Um, let's take a look at filtering. Now we know how to rank. Let's filter this list using the filter bar up here. Uh, let's say that I only want to focus on the ones that have changed at least more than 1% in price. So what I, one thing that I can do is I can filter by percent change and I want the ones that are greater than 1%. And notice that it automatically filters my list. And there's only seven symbols out of the 100 that are that have moved more than 1% since the close of yesterday. Interesting. I can add another filter. Notice that you have a little plus here. And I can say, I want, again, percent change. And I want this to be less than negative one. Now, you can see that my list went blank. And the reason why it went blank is because of this operator over here on the left. I'm expecting symbols to be above one and below one at the same time. 
So it's not going to work. You have to go here and change the operator to or so that it gives you both extremes. Now I have all the symbols that are above one and all the symbols that are below negative one. So if you're monitoring price movement and you want to do a quick filter, you can use those filter, uh, the filters at the very top for that purpose. Let me go ahead and click on the minus here and uncheck this filter because I don't need it anymore. So now let's filter by technical analysis. And this is going to be very cool because not only are you um, limited to using what's built in in TradeStation, you can bring in any custom idea, something that you've, you know, something that you've been thinking about, uh, technical calculation, maybe uh, some values that you um, are monitoring and you want to filter the stock market based on those calculations, you can do that right here in radar screen. I'm going to right click on the column header because in order for you to filter by the crossover, you have to enable the alert on the moving average. And I'm choosing the header because that way it applies to all the symbols. Okay, so right click on the header, we go to studies and I'm going to edit my study for all symbols. When I do that, all I need to do is enable the alert. In this case, I want the alert to be continuous because I'm gonna turn off pop-up messages and sounds. So there's a, an option here that disables uh, message center notifications. What this does is that, or what this implies is that you're monitoring alerts in a visual manner. So you're not really looking for an audible or a visual alert to let you know that something's happening. You're using the alert as a filtering mechanism that you're able to see in front of um, the radar screen window. Okay, so let's go ahead and click okay. And when I do that, you're gonna see some markers show up here on the right-hand side of my column. The little yellow marker, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but it's a little dot on one of the corners, just tells you that there's an alert enabled in that cell. And since we enabled the alert on all the symbols, they all have it. But in addition to that little yellow corner, some of them have a red marker. The ones that have a red marker are the real time alerts. So I can look at any of the symbols that have a red marker. For example, here we have Baker Hughes. I click on it. I look at the chart and take a look at what's happening right here with the moving averages. They're kissing each other right there on the current bar. It's happening as we speak. Real time alerts. If I want to take a look here at uh, Keurig, KDP, again, look at the two moving averages. They have crossed right here at this moment in real time. Now, with the alert enabled right here inside of radar screen, I can use the filter bar up here to reduce my list and only focus on the ones that are triggering the alert for me. So let's go here to check in this alert, this filter again. This time, I'm going to select one of my columns here for moving averages. It doesn't matter which one you select. And I'm going to set this to alert true. And there we go. So out of the 100 symbols, this is 100 companies that make up the NASDAQ 100 index, there's four symbols that are triggering the alert right now. If you had to, had had to, look for these symbols manually, how long would it have taken you uh, for you to have to check one by one to see which ones are crossing? A radar screen is the application that is going to help you, you know, find those opportunities. I can click on any of these symbols and see how the crossover is happening on the current bar. See, craft is an example of, you know, moving averages that are crossing at the moment. And again, this can be done on any technical idea or calculation. Uh, Russ, yes, I am on the TradeStation desktop. This is not web trading. And on that note, the functionality that I just talked about, you know, the filtering and the turning on the alerts, this is not available on the web trading platform. On web trading, you have the ability to add some technical indicators, but you don't have the filtering and the scanning capabilities that you find in radar screen, okay? Yes, to set up the alert, all you need to do, you don't have to do it on the chart itself. Uh, we do it here on the radar screen. All you do is right click on the column header, go to studies, 
and then you have to edit the moving average two lines for all symbols. Click there and then go to the alerts tab. By the way, this class is being recorded and is going to be available for playback in about a couple of days, a couple or a few days, and it just has to go through compliance. And once we have it approved, then it'll go on, you know, on YouTube so that you can watch it just in case you want to review some of the content. Okay. Excellent. Let's go and show you a little bit of trading functionality. I'm going to go here to a new workspace. Matrix is an order entry tool that allows you one click order entry. If you set it up properly, you know, it doesn't, don't, don't, I don't want to scare anyone here, but uh, let's go and open up the matrix. Most of the trading that happens on trade station, I believe happens on the matrix. Um, you can also use the trade bar up here. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. There are multiple, multiple places in trade station where you can place a trade. Uh, the trade bar is, it's very straightforward. You know, um, you see it on many other trading platforms. It's just a matter of filling out the boxes and placing your trade. On the matrix though, you have a little bit more information. You have right here in the middle, you have the prices. In this case, this is um, craft. Okay. You have the prices for craft. Craft is currently trading at $36.70. We can see the price right there in the middle. But on the blue and on the red, you have buyers and sellers. What you're looking at here is market depth. So you can see how many shares are waiting at each one of these levels. I mean, supply and demand is what drives the prices of any security. So if you see a lot of supply on the selling side, you know, there's, there's a possibility that it could drive the prices down. And vice versa, if you see a lot of uh, supply, I mean, if you see a lot of demand on the buying side, that could drive the prices up. So having visibility into market depth uh, is used by many traders, you know, to make decisions on where to put in your orders. You also see actual volume here on the right-hand side. So you see which prices have been traded the most. You see those in number and you see that as a graph. So the graph helps you pinpoint the one that is traded the most. 36.83 was the price that has been traded the most or is the price that's been traded the most with 148,000 shares traded. Um, the VWAP though, the VWAP is this little V right here. That's volume weighted average price. So not only it takes into account, you know, volume, if we go by volume, it's 3683. But if we want to average the prices as well, based on volume, then this is the average weighted price, 36.81. So let's go ahead and put in some trades here. Marie is asking, can we trade options on the matrix? For sure. You can trade options on the matrix. The only limitation is that it's going to be single leg options. So if you're looking to trade spreads, that is something that you cannot load into matrix because it only supports one symbol. Uh, so yes and no. <laughs> so let's go over here and place a trade for craft. Um, I'm going to place a trade at the low of today. Where is the low of today? The high is represented by this horizontal bar at the top. Why I'm not I'm not seeing the bottom one, which is odd because you should you should see it here somewhere, but I don't see it on my screen. Let me go ahead and uh, pull up a chart just to check what the low of today is. So let me go here to chart analysis. Let me resize it here, put it on the right hand side. If I look at the status line right here at the very top, for craft, I can see that the high and the low, here's the low, 36.67. So 36.67, oh, there it is. I wasn't seeing the I wasn't seeing the horizontal line because the current price was right over it. But you can see that when it moves away from it, you can see the horizontal line. That's the low of today. It's just that craft is trading at the low and is pushing the low lower and lower. So, and we can see that represented here on the chart. A lot of times I like to have a chart open with my matrix because you see the orders in relationship to historical price movement. So you see a little bit more of the store. You know, it's not only uh, one dimension where you see the prices here, you can see the, you know, the history as well and help you with some significant levels that you want to trade. So if I wanted to put in a trade at the low of today, 
which right now is 3666. So I'm going to join these people over here on the on the left. There's already, you know, 2,600 shares waiting to get filled at 3666. And I'm just going to join them. Notice that when I hover over that cell, it says buy 100 limit. So it's using the quantity that's over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to change that to 1,000. I could click, you know, from here, from the history. This little box below the quantity is just going to remember every quantity that you've used to just for, for efficiency. So once I set it to 1,000, I come over here and I can just, it's just trading at the low. And if I click over here, I'm going to get filled most likely. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on 3666. The order goes through. I haven't gotten filled yet. Order filled. There, we get filled. And I know because we see this horizontal bar running across my screen and I can see real-time PNL on the left-hand side of my matrix. Every time that craft goes up a penny, I make $10. And every time that craft moves down a penny, I lose $10. You can use the PNL column here on the left-hand side to set some quick profit targets and stop losses. So if I wanna, you know, get out, if it reaches 100, maybe a quick trade, I just have to click on this positive 100 and it sends a selling transaction right there. That red box is just my order to exit. Notice that when I place my trades here on the matrix, they are shown right here on my chart, which is very convenient. I can see where I entered at 3666 and notice where my target is at 3676. You can also trade from the chart, by the way. There's a little button here that says chart trading if you wanna go there. Um, but let's go ahead and just focus on the matrix. Let me cancel this order. Canceling is very easy as well. You just have to click on the order box and it just goes away. You can also set stop losses by just clicking on a negative amount. Not only can you set stop losses on profit targets the way that I just showed you, but you can also modify them by clicking and dragging. So if I want a tighter stop, I can just click and drag and I'm gonna drop it right here at minus 50. And anything you do in here gets reflected here on the right hand side. Yes, Russ, just to, to, to your question, you know, if you do web trading, web trading is a, I call it a simplified version of trade station. Uh, which eventually is going to be, you know, enhanced so that it's there's a little bit more parity between uh, web trading and the desktop. But the desktop is the one that has all the advanced functionality that I'm describing. Uh, so if you're looking for those, you know, scanning features or uh, the in-depth, you know, templates that the matrix has, maybe you would want to go to the desktop so that you can have access to those features. John is asking, can I trade option spreads with TradeStation? For sure. There is an app here called OptionStation Pro. I do a class on OptionStation Pro. And it's um, if you go to the learn section of TradeStation.com, uh, there's a, in the drop-down menu, there's uh, one that there's an option that says getting started. And if you go to getting started, we have archives on all those presentations. Uh, let's talk about bracket. Thomas is asking, can I create a bracket? And that was going to be my next thing to do. Let me go ahead and cancel this, this stop. And what we mean by a bracket is, is a an OCO, an order cancels order. If one gets hit, the other gets canceled. But uh, once you put in a bracket, you're monitoring both behavior, I mean, both scenarios. If it goes up, then it exits. But if it goes down, it also exits based on your parameters, based on your observations, based on the risk that you wanted to take. So when you do that, you can you know, leave the trade and let it trade because you've already factored in losses and profits. Uh, the way that you set a bracket is by using the place OCO order button here on the right-hand side. I'm gonna try to keep it simple so that we don't overcomplicate things. If I go to this drop down, you're going to see multiple templates. They're not really difficult to understand. You know, TradeStation has a lot of features and it may seem like a lot, but once you get a handle on these templates, it's going to be easy for you and it's going to make your trading more efficient. But the one that I want is this exit bracket with one limit and one stop, which is going to take care of my profit target and my stop loss. 
you can click on this ellipsis button. It's a formatting button, like a menu, so that you can change the price offsets. You can see how the default is 10 cents, but you can change it to anything you want. So if you want your target to be a dollar, you just put an A1 there. If you want your stop to be $10, then you put an A10 there. These are 10 cents profits and 10 cents stop loss. I'm not going to change them. I'm just going to click OK and click on this place OCO order. And there we go. Now we have the two exit transactions that are connected to each other. If one side gets hit, the other is going to get canceled. All right. So that's very easy to do right here on TradeStation. Let me click on this yellow button that says cancel all. It'll cancel all my active orders. And let me click on this close button, which will close my position. This close button, don't confuse it with the closed matrix. Doesn't close the matrix. It closes anything you have in your account on the symbol craft. So be careful about hitting close here because it's a closing order transaction. Sale. It's a market order to sell or buy to cover anything you have on the symbol that's on the matrix. One more trade. We're going to do one more example and then we'll go on to questions, okay? The, the all-inclusive trade. My entry with my exit, with my exits. That's uh, ideally the way that I would want to trade because it takes care of my entry, my profit target, and my stop loss all in one trade. I can do that with futures. Let's go here to ES, ES M24, is it? Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So this is ESM24. Let's suppose that, uh, again, I can place a trade here by clicking on the bid or the ask. Um, if we want to be, if we want to go short the S&P E-mini, let's go short this time, right? I'm going to come here and check this box, attach OSO. Attach OSO, what it does, it just attaches whatever bracket it's specified in here to the entry order that you're submitting. If I go here to the ellipsis, you can see that for futures, is using 10 ticks on either side. So all I need to do is click on either one of these prices. If I want to sell short here at 5082, this is my confirmation. I'm going to say yes. And here's my trade. I have my entry order with my stop right here at the top. And then I have my profit target right here at the bottom. Since the S&P is moving like crazy, I'm going to be filled in just a moment and we'll just let it order play. fill. There we go. We got filled and we we're probably going to be either stopped with our stop loss or we're going to you know, make $125 in a few seconds if it moves down a little bit more. Okay. Let's see some of the questions that are coming through. Order fill. There we go. We just got stopped. I mean, we just hit our target, which is really cool. Um, Let's see. Marie's asking, can you show me real quick how to trade options on the matrix? Uh, well, first of all, you need to know the symbol uh, to put it here inside of um, the matrix. Now, finding the symbol may be, or knowing the symbol may be challenging or not. Uh, we use, um, you know, the year, the month, the day, uh, what type of option it is, if it's a call or a put, and then the strike price. If you want to search for the symbol, you can go to settings and go to symbol. So here, this allows you to search for symbols. I'm going to go to lookup. Let's suppose that um, I'm going to go to the options. Let me use this. Um, options is our stock options. Let's say that we are looking for stock options on craft. I'm going to click on lookup. You know, the filter, it's going to give you uh, the next three strikes above and below and three expiration dates. So this is what you get there. Um, craft is trading at 36.67. Let's suppose that I want to trade a call trading at 36, but I want to go out a little bit further. Let's say that I'm going to trade the May 3rd trading at 36 right here, this one right here. I click OK and then OK. So that loads that call into my matrix. And this is the way that you would trade it. You know, uh, you can you know click on the bid or the ask the same way that I did with uh, the futures and the stock, you would do the exact same thing here with the option symbol. Ideally, you want to trade your options in Option Station Pro because it's the one that has all the features that you would need to trade not only single leg options, but also spreads. Is there a course for options trading? 
there is the Options Education Center. We are posting articles and videos and different option strategies. So if you haven't been to the Options Education Center, make sure you click on that link and bookmark it so that you can check the content that we're pushing out on a monthly basis. Um, Steve is asking, are all those bids and asks just trade station clients or are they everyone's, including all investors outside our trade station clients? This is everything. So when we looked at, let me go here to craft again. When we looked at all these numbers and orders waiting to get filled, this is not only trade station, this is data that's coming directly from the exchanges. So whatever data is being reported by ECNs and market makers, it's being transmitted over to us. So this is everything that is visible in the market at any given moment. This is from Steven. I can set all my buy and sell parameters before the trade actually executes. Yes, for sure. If you wanted to, for example, do that trade that I did with the attach OSO, you know, I can go to the ellipses and set my profit targets and my stop losses. Let's suppose I want to do a $1 profit with a 50 cent stop. I'm going to click OK. And since this checkbox is checked, I can click on buy market. And that's puts order my order in. Filled. I got filled at 36.66. You see the price right here. Notice how my target is at 37.67. And my stop at 36.16. Looks weird because I'm looking at a five minute chart. But if I go here to a daily chart, you can see those you know, orders in relationship to daily prices. Can I send market orders? This is the question from Thomas with targets preset. We just did that. So you do the exact, exact same thing. You attach OSO, select the bracket you want, and then you can use the market buttons here to buy market or sell short market. So here we have a question from Matt V. What will be the trailing code for this in easy language? Um, are you talking about a trailing stop, Matt V? Uh, because I'm not sure what you mean by trailing code. I'm, I suppose that you're talking about you know, the code that you would use in easy language to set up a trailing stop. Um, we can take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, in fact, we don't have to, because if you go here, let me show you what you can do. You can go to um, studies, go to add strategy. You know, let's look at, we have a strategy already that's called dollar trailing. And you can look at the, where is it? Edit the easy language. You can click on edit easy language to open up the code and see how this dollar trailing is written. And you can see that it's using a reserved word that's called set dollar trailing. By the way, if this is your first time looking at easy language or hearing the word easy language, easy language is a custom or a proprietary programming language that allows you to create strategies and indicators. So if you don't like the ones that are supplied with the trade station and you want to give those indicators your own personal spin, then you can go into easy language and make the modifications. There's no trial for data packages. So what I do recommend if you're going to you know, sign up for a data package is that you do it at the very beginning of the month so that you can get your worth of money. You know, if you do it towards the end of the month, it's, it's um, not prorated. You get billed for that month and then you would get billed the following. So for any data packages that you want to add, I recommend you do it at the beginning of the month and you get the most value out of the package. How do you get set a limit order and confirmatory order on the matrix? Yeah, if you noticed my confirmations were turned off. Uh, sometimes uh, I do that in classes because I can enter trades more, more quickly, but uh, confirmations are turned on by default. If you want to control confirmations, just right click Go to settings and then order entry preferences. You can control validations and confirms for each one of the asset classes that you trade on TradeStation. Okay. Guys, it was great having you all here, uh, but this is the end of my class. Thank you so much for joining You know our getting started class. Thank you for joining the TradeStation family. Um, so... Uh, we are glad to have you here, and I hope to see you in some of my future classes. So thank you for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I'll see everyone next time.